name caresses the lips with the lightness of champagne. Paris. A tower scintillating with epigrams would be outsparkled by the reality which is she. Paris. Elegance. Fashion. Decreed for the new season in secrecy of her salons. A cocktail ensemble. And là, she invites the whole world to join in her fashion parade. A clay monsieur, the guitar line, in wool, trimmed with astrakhan. The spirit of autumn freshness, as seen by Jacques Haim. For you, milady, femininity in a suit from Jeanne Lanvin, with emancipation in the accentuated hips, the short jacket with high neckline. And now, a matching motif in leopard, to enhance elegance in pencil slim yellow. But if Denise snuggles into the comfort of her red ingot shawl color by Bruyère, who shall blame her? Note how the pocket flaps point artfully to the line of the hips. There is more glamorous elegance to a square foot in the Champs-Élysées than to a square mile anywhere else on earth. In the season of high fashion, it becomes, how would you say, an open-air studio where the mannequins arrive to be photographed, by appointment, of course. So, with a hint of oriental pagodas, she adds her charm to the life of the boulevards, to be passed by the lens of a camera in the fashion magazines. Her hat will inspire rhapsodies. The lightning effect of her blue-green top coat will be stressed, and all under one caption, Paris says, wool. So the world sends its finest artists to serve with their talents the art of Paris. Sketching the curves of a Jacques Griff model, we find Britain's Arthur Ferrier. In hound's tooth with hood collar and turned back cuffs, she's prepared for the strongest gale. A tone poem by Monguin waits among the flowers. And now, over to the lake, where the long line of Christian Dior waits for the cameras to turn. Points to note are the heightening of the neckline by the velvet cape line and the unusual echo in color between the suit and muff. Note, too, the high collar line of the jacket, emphasized by the very short reverse. The new high martingale gathers the waist of the full skirted coat. Casually, they reveal the line of patou to all who chance to pass by. There is news in the lower hemline, news too in the brimless hats. From tip to toe, they are ready to face autumn winds in high collars and deep, full pockets. In the Place de la Concorde, we can reflect on the trends we have seen, on the urge to high-waisted slimness, in contrast to the side-pleated belt skirts effect. Now we see how line in white and grey diagonals conjures movement into a full-sleeved coat by worth. Draped over from the bodies, her coat cape fastens at the waist, a striking design by Paquin. Even Pierre could take a tip. Now the bookstalls, which should be sober, yet somehow contrive to be gay. Ask any tourist the reason, the reply will be, c'est Paris. In her tartan scarf and bolero by Jacques Fat, she's well suited for a sightseeing tour. And in her peaked hat, a delightful military touch. Can the spring parades be far ahead? The stones of the Arc de Triomphe mellow in the late summer sun. They are said to look down with a certain platonic approval on the passing of daintily shod feet. Witness now their contentment as the creations of Nina Ricci pause on their way. 
Note on the right the outward sweep of the astrakhan trimming to stress once more the line of the hips. Two really smart wool suits in freshness and in line to delight the Parisian crowd. And see, we solve the mystery of the cuffs, which, when married, so resembled a muff. In every corner of Paris you find them, the photographers in search of the latest fashion line. Captive to the movie man languishes Georgette Reynal's model, a willing prisoner in grey. Distinguishing Barbe Bleu by Bruyère is the white sleeve, in harmony with the front of her coat. The tiny hat permits the final touches to the coiffeur for the high-coloured mood. In the flower market near Notre Dame, we have room to study the dropped shoulder lines of two coats by Rochas with complete protection against the weather in uh, what you might call the line of belle content. Once again, small velvet berries crown the high collars. They promise to become the season's rage. The photographer will not miss the absence of pockets in the camel hair coat, and Monsieur will most surely approve. The flower market attracts the bachelor girl too, and we have pleasure in recognizing two models by La Forie. On the right, note the skirt length and the season's curiously racked up sleeve. On the left, the line from hips to collar. The hush of late afternoon is with us as we seek the charm of Montmartre. And now, elegance walks in the shape line by Schiaparelli, on the right, with slenderness enhanced by the hem of a three-quarters coat. Your pardon, madame, but one must make a choice. Let me direct you to La Petite in green. Note how the bell curve seeks the line of the sun repletes and the smile of recognition between knotted collar and cuffs. La Demoiselle in red takes her ease in a free-flowing line like a companion in lemon and grey tweed. Suzette in grey worsted sounds a clerical note. And between us, Pierre Balmain's design is most accommodating. Compris? It is when Paris in her jewels is seen against the velvet of the night that the full power of her magic, her feminine witchcraft, is felt. It is then that she sparkles as a lady of high degree, and under the spotlights of the famous studio Accor, the most beautiful women in Paris have been posed. Permit me, monsieur, now to rediscover our models en route for a party in the evening ahead. Both are in crease-resisting jersey. Note the balance between the scarf and low fastened fronts on the left. Appreciate with me the décolleté by Jeanne Laforie with its asymmetrical neckline, caught by the diamond clasp. For the ultra-sophisticated, Jacqueline models this cocktail ensemble from the house of Balenciaga. Here the designer has favored a lower neckline and the wrap swathed around shoulders and arms compensates for the severity in the line of the rather shorter dress. The gay élan of Paris is conjured into the ospreys in the absurdly stimulating oasis of the hat. For this one evening, the balcony room at the studio becomes the high temple of fashion in Paris. But the party will not be complete until the photographer is finished. But this gives us our chance to study the beauty of three contrasts in finely woven wool. From Jean Dessé comes the suit on the left, glistening with a rich embroidery of sequins. Joanna is radiant in a peg-top creation in beige, trimmed with beaver from the house of Maggie Roof. As for Yvonne, the effect is one of effortless ease, from the pleated flounce to the delicate curve of the hat.
Now the spotlights are focused on five ladies. Note the clever touch by Balmain in the center, which permits the petticoat to peep coyly through. The use of grey strass for embroidery by Carvon. The youthful suit by Rochas. But there are dreams for the future to be discussed by Monsieur and Madame Ritchie and Madame Germaine Lecomte. Dreams too for Giselle, who now descends a vision in a feather tracery of wool lace by Jacques Griff. What a meeting of the exquisite as Jackie waits to receive her in a Jersey hostess gown designed by Fat. A gown which establishes character from the highlights of belt and clasp, which direct all attention to the face. From the softness of tartan muslin, Georgette Renal has created graciousness. Only two more guests are expected. The party is almost complete. Now, this staircase, which has known beauty in such richness, thrills to the loveliness of Balenciaga. Her companion wears a sheath gown in Lame Jersey by Monguin, which commands attention because of its straightness of line, simplicity, which deserves the regal crown of the cape. Time's model in La Mai Jersey sits left of Madame Laling of Christian Dior. In pink and black tulle, Patou makes a plea for the spring. A plea taken up by the snow and robin red broadcloth of Maggie Roof. In the midst of a flowing pageant of color, Monsieur and Madame Worth converse. Paquin, Dessé, Carvin, Grey, all add their richness to a living flower of haute couture. Lovin in white, Schiaparelli in black with scarf in chartreuse, Le Comte in violet broadcloth and matching tulle. Paris. Elegance, fashion. Decreed for the world of women in the secrecy of her salons. And so she walks, a lady of rank among her equals, on the stairway of high fashion, which leads to the stars. <laughs>